I have a file because I got caught smuggling people out of East Germany. Again, there's not a lot of editing I do, but maybe a little bit that I'll end up doing, but we don't do a whole lot of it unless you tell me, I'm, you know I'm, what, I'm, I'm I want you to take that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to express myself on this, but maybe I went too far. No, you say whatever you want. You're, you're good to go. This is, this is, uh, I kind of want what your, you know, I want your real feelings on this. You, you bring a certain <laughs> perspective to this that most of us here don't have, you well, know. The thing about it is, having been on both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. East as well as West Germany, mm -hmm. and then living in the U.S. for just about a little over 30 years, mm -hmm. <laughs> does that age me? Um, yeah, it's a different story. You get yeah. to see things. Okay. So tell me, you were in, were you in West Berlin or in, just in West Germany somewhere? Or where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Stuttgart, West Germany, okay. home of Porsche and Mercedes. Oh, and nice. Yes, Do you have any connections Apple. there? My brother used to be a master mechanic. Okay. <laughs> so his best buddy is actually the master mechanic in one of the productions. Okay. So they do get them at expense. Ah, nice. So they don't pay retail. <laughs> <laughs> so. so you grew up in Stuttgart, and then uh, you were, were you born there? I was born in Stuttgart. Okay. I was raised between East Germany and West Germany because my mother's parents were in East Germany. Okay. Her great-grandparents fled from Russia because of genocide in Russia. This was during the gulags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Towards the Jews. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just Adolf. Yes. Things like that took place even prior to. Mm -hmm. So... They got stuck because of World War One in former, now Eastern Germany, former East Germany, and they started to build up a life over there. After they got stuck, needless to say, World War Two comes around, and the fence goes up. Mm -hmm. So now we have an East and a West Germany, and my mother was in Berlin at a sports event. Met my father. <laughs> In West Berlin? In Berlin at that time. Okay. It was still Berlin. Okay. It changed after uh, 62 when, when they definitely closed mm -hmm. the fences and had no more exchanges. Um, my mother took off with my father and went down south towards the Alps. Okay. <laughs> so, and by the time she realized what's going on, not only was she pregnant, but... The wall so what what year would that have been? Um, that was in '59. In '59, okay. Yeah. So so there had already been a split. Yeah. But there was still a little more fluidity going between Russia the two had sides. Russia problem with the four powers to accept um, their part mm -hmm. in it. Russia wanted more, and Americans said, "Well, then we take." This part, the French said, we take that part. The, the British. Dutch and the British took another part. Mm -hmm. And they were fine with it as far as the defense goes, but Russia wanted a larger piece of the pie. Hmm. And the rest of them said, you know what, uh-uh, no can do. Well, then Russia decided we're going to get Ulbricht at that time, an upcoming president for Eastern Germany. And developed the NVR, the Nationalistic Folks Army, mm -hmm. Volks Army, Nationale Volks Army, and used it against its own people. And that's when they started to have, at first, barbed wire fences. The wall came up. Used um, it against their own people in the terms that they their backs are their backs are to West Berlin and their guns are facing toward East Berlin. Yeah, pretty yeah. much, pretty much. Um, East Germany was the largest living prison that we had mm -hmm. because nobody turns its own guns against its own people and kills them to keep them in. Mm -hmm. 
but that's exactly what they did. Um, so you had you had family members then in East in East Berlin. No, in East Germany. Not in, in East Germany, Berlin. yes. Okay, East in East Germany. Germany. Okay. Berlin, even East Berlin was an island by itself. East Berlin was Candyland for East Germans mm -hmm. because they had everything. And then it went into the rest of East Germany. Mm -hmm. But everything went to East Berlin first because it was government seat. They tried to keep a distance from, from the so-called socialistic Democrats. Yes. That's so. funny you bring that up, actually, that name, because I've done a little research on this. And it's funny, like, even today, we'll get into this in a minute, but it's just, it's just funny that you hear that term today, even here in the U.S., democratic socialism or socialist democrats and that's the same term it is that was used in east germany it is and russia. you know they and russia as Actually well not russia but the ussr yeah right okay. in the soviet union um but i was just looking at that i saw several titles and banners and well, things of the people that I were and, and they used to say socialist democrats i used to have them i had my lenin button um, because of the Freie Deutsche Jugend, the young pioneers of East Germany. Yes, I had are, to participate whenever we're, we were, we're there. We're going to get we're going to get into that in a second. So because so. I looked into that too, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the the uh, the socialist version of the Nazi youth, basically. Yeah, it is. It is. But the the sad thing is, um, it's a programming forced onto the youth. Mm -hmm by by the government and it's it's using the use against its own parents mm -hmm. despite well i think that's key you have to do that yeah right you have to, they did the same thing with pol pot you know they did the exact same thing they did the same thing with mao and they turn them against their parents because well, they need to get rid of the old guard that, that's what it is and have purity growing up in the purity next generation in the sense of yeah, 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 in the sense of socialism. <laughs> so you grew up in, in, in Stuttgart, and I know my accent's off there. That's what okay. what uh, what did you know about the East as a little girl, right? What were you taught in school about about the, the East and the, and the history? The didn't talk much about it. We did know that it was East and West, that we belonged together, but we were kept separate. That pretty much was about it. Um as far as the media goes, it was suppressed. Hmm. The only thing you ever heard was when something trickled through the underground. Now, why you would think that in the East you would have that. Why would you have that in the West? West Germans didn't want to stir up the pot. Okay. Um, it was still a time of Russians being right behind that wall. Mm-hmm. You don't there was a threat. Yeah, you mm -hmm. don't you don't play with the enemy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you keep them at bay, you keep an eye on them, but you don't play with them. Mm -hmm. So, information was very limited, hmm. as far as that goes. The only thing we ever heard was when somebody escaped successfully, hmm. or when somebody got killed on the border. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, from the East German side, not from the West German mm -hmm. side. So. Um, but as a young girl, very little information. The only the only thing that I knew, I mean, when it really became obvious to me that, that we had a problem mm -hmm. within the country, I must have been about seven years old. We took the train over to East Germany, and you, on average, spend about two hours on the border where they checked everything, the, all the suitcases were opened, you got East German marks for it, which wasn't worth a lick. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can buy much. And another thing is you couldn't take anything out. Mm -hmm. We always took something in. We never came back with something out. I mean, there wasn't anything really of value until later. So when you were young, you were typically going over there to visit family. Yeah. Okay. Um, four weeks in the summertime and two weeks in the wintertime. Okay, so each year. Yeah. So there was at least that kind of fluidity where you could, you know, families obviously had been separated and and you were yeah. able to visit each other. Well, so, my grandparents weren't allowed because they weren't retired. So they were not allowed to come and visit until um, the age of 65 or mm -hmm. older. Okay. Because then they become a burden to the state. Uh, so it's okay to give you a visa yeah. so you can go to the West. 
Yeah, okay. Interesting. So, so they couldn't come visit you. No. Nope. Okay. What uh, What were your impressions, do you remember, when you were first a little girl going into East Germany? I mean, was it pretty it much was, the same at it, that point? Had it, it was... Germans have a, have a children's home to scare a kid. Schlafkindlein schlaf, der Vater hütet schlaf. Mutter geht in Pummelsland, Pummelsland ist abgebrannt. Um, it's a war rhyme. It's a rather dark rhyme because it says child, little child sleep. Your father is in the war. Your mother is going to another country, but the country got burned down. Hmm. Okay. Um, that's pretty much the feeling that you have when you go across the border because mm -hmm. everything is gray and gray and gray. I mean, it was, it was depressing. Mm -hmm. Not only leaving Hof, which was the first city in West Germany or the last before you got to the border, the, the woods opened up so you got into a little bit more open space. The train really slowed down. People in on the train really became more more hush hush hush. Mm -hmm. You you didn't hear much. Everybody was pss, 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 pss. it was more of a whisper than than a talk anymore. And it's like, what the heck is going? on? I mean, you you really got that feeling like you're going into something really bad. So you so you actually walking around the towns or the cities, pe there was people weren't talking. There was that not much really, of a difference. Not really. You couldn't you couldn't talk in the open. You couldn't even trust your, your own parents to mm -hmm. some extent. Or your I mean, own children. which I find out much later because I have a Stasi file. Um, What's that? Stasi file, the state security of East Germany. Okay. Um, I have a file because I got caught smuggling people out of East Germany to West Germany. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll hold on here. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, the it it was. It was there. I mean, my grandmother used to hang out at the window and waited for the mail. And she always told us, you don't say anything personal to the mail person. Mm -hmm. That's like putting it into the Brafta. And it's like, what? Yeah, the Brafta. That's the, the town's cryo. It's like, okay. And sure enough, we, we I don't know. I mean, as teenagers, we did some dumb stuff, typical teenager stuff. But it got to the next largest city, which was responsible for that area, which was Hohenstein Elstal. And the Fobo showed up, the, the police, and asked us about it. What, what was this about? What did you mean about that and that? That and is such scary. And such. That is and just scary. And it's like, excuse me, how do you know? You know, and I mean, we're, we're talking about being 15 years old, and mm -hmm. it's like, Sure, I'll take you on, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're threatening you with, with being taken to a work camp. And it's like, what? And and my grandmother, you don't talk about things. You don't talk about things. You don't talk about things. You have to learn to shut up. Just tell them it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like, how can it be beautiful? So this is something, you know, going from being a little girl and going into a teenager when you, you know, because you're going yeah, every but, year and you're visiting, but you're starting to learn. Oh, I mean, you had enough, you, 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 you could observe early it. on as you, a girl, a little girl. You so but. aware of it. It's, it's not, a, my cousin's friends, school friends, um, two of them actually died on the border because they tried to escape. From East Germany. From they, East Germany. They, one of them got shot by, by the guards and the other one got caught up in, in the barbed wire and they let him bleed to death. Mm. It wasn't easy, but when we had a chance, we talked among us as teenagers. And, and when, when you have fear of, of who to talk to and about what, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And the problem didn't fit well with me. I, I wasn't used to being controlled as far as my speech goes as far as my gate to to go on this side of the road or that side of the road don't peek over the fence because hey the kgb might be listening in and 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 taking pictures it's like come on now who sits in a in a government controlled pig farm and, and take pictures of, of others well the kgb does it's like excuse me it was crazy it was just crazy 
So you had, you know, again, you're going into your teenage years, you're starting to get a much better idea of what this actually means and what oh, yeah. the difference is between living in West Germany oh, and living in East Germany. Different differences like day and night. They changed Chemnitz to Karl Marx City, okay, the East Germans did, to glorify Karl Marx. To glorify Karl Marx. Uh, he's one of the founders. Karl Marx. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's one of the founders of um, socialism as it's written. Not well, as and it a German. Practice. And on top of it, yeah. Uh, Marx and Engels are, are the ones that, that were the basis or being used as the basis of, mm -hmm. of. I saw a number of pictures in front of buildings and on roads of, you know, they'd have a big head of Karl Marx in places. And do you remember going through and Karl see, Marx this City. would have been after Stalin, right? When yeah. you were a teenager. Yeah. So you didn't see Stalin up everywhere. No. We, Brezhnev? Uh, you did have Stalin and you had Lenin. Lenin was... A profile picture on your pins in the Young Pioneers, uh -huh. which was an honor badge that you got, and it was just a small pin, um, size of a bigger shirt button. Mm -hmm. um, Lenin also was the grandfather of of, of former East Germany. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lenin was. According to the East government, the, the glorified and justified personification of a of a socialistic god. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how he was presented, and and it's like, what? I mean, he tried to kill off people. He cleared out whole villages. You know, it's interesting. I because I've read a little bit on this. I've read a lot on Stalin, and a lot of people believed that. Lenin, and still do today, that Lenin wasn't that bad. You know, his, his policies may have been bad, but he wasn't like Stalin in the sense that he got rid of people, even in his own government, and et cetera. But he did. He did. That's the thing about it. But Lenin had, had control over the media better than Stalin did. And Stalin had the problem. He took on the West openly. Mm -hmm. Lenin did it from, from the back door in. Lenin... Lenin did what the Democratic Party is doing today. The U.S. Democratic Party? Yeah. Okay. Why, why do you say that? What do you mean? Um, because all the similarities aren't there. I mean, you look at it even today, when, when you turn on TV today, all this Trump this, Trump that, and we, we don't care, and, and he's mafia boss, and he's using um, mafia-like uh, uh, methods Mm -hmm. to 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 get information and using it against yet it's only against trump but when you really look at it in the overall picture the democratic party has been doing it for quite some time now so control mm -hmm. like i said i've i've been there i i've seen it i grew up with it i don't want it mm -hmm. and i told my husband and i love him dearly but if it should come down to it and we are implementing those kind of rules in this country here, I'll be the first one to pack my bags and move to New Zealand to count sheep. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not willing to to give up on my freedom that I, after 30 years in this country, achieved and and made mine. Just to squander away and to give it away for for somebody that wants to rule take and not share this country used to be about sharing being together as a nation not as a single party where you have a handful of people controlling everything the money goes into this handful of people and everybody else is being held at bay with with crumbs because you're not allowed to, to go further than the crumbs they get the silver platter. All you get is, is the tiny little teaspoon with a hole in it. If you're lucky enough, you get a half of a teaspoon of soup. Are you ta are you talking about the politicians? Yeah. Okay. So I, I've seen it. I've been there. I stood in line not knowing what, what was at the end of the line in East Germany. Just to find out it was mascara. The cheapest, oldest mascara for seven marks at that time was for sale. 
but everybody stood in line because hey, there's a chance you get some old mascara. So this are time; these are times where you visited your family, mm-hmm. and you were there. I think you said for four weeks at time. At four sometimes. weeks in the summer and two in the winter. So when you're there in four weeks, so they are you. You're registered there in a sense. They oh, know they you're there. Sure, they know yeah. where you're at. They know you're there, <laughs> and so during those four weeks while you're visiting your family, you, you go into of- the is it the young pioneers? I had to because yeah. because. Um, and so do you had the uniform? I had my you uniform. You had the whole thing. I had okay. my uniform. And so tell shirt. me a little bit about the Young Pioneers. What did they have you do? Is that <laughs> is that does that include school? I did do to school mm-hmm. um, just about a week every summer because our summer vacation felt different than my cousins. So yeah, we just fell into the same pot. Mm-hmm. It wasn't mandatory, however, to keep to keep the peace because my grandfather didn't agree with it. Mm. Okay, he got expelled from the party and his rebellion turned into growing a little Adolf stash. <laughs> okay? And they asked him several times to to shave that off, but it was his form of being rebellious against the system. So, um he never shaved it <laughs> until he died. So. What does that mean if you're kicked out of the party? I mean, um, how many people there in East Germany are not in the party? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure the number was rather minimal. You probably could mm-hmm. count them on one or two fingers. Mm-hmm. The way it affected us, when we mm-hmm. were there, when citrus fruit came in from Cuba, the oranges were rather like straw. They weren't oranges, really. They were more for choosing rather than eating. But when citrus did come in, and it finally made it into the village. Nine out of ten times, we weren't entitled to anything because mm. they were out. Mm. Okay. So. So there, there's things like that. So they, they had their ways of. So they were, in. they were, they were a little less equal than the other people that uh, were yeah, equal. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So my grandparents really did live in the village. They, they lived outside. It's a good, fifteen minutes down the hill. But they're they're away from everything. They have their own little area, and I imagine because of my great grandmother, she was a, a very feisty Jewish woman. There was a reason why they lived out there, <laughs> because they didn't quite fit in. Mm-hmm. Everything was limited. You you couldn't get just everything when you needed it. So improvising was high on the list. Growing your own year round. The greenhouse that my uncle actually built to the back, the thicker plastic we brought in in the suitcase. So they have the plastic to, to build a greenhouse. There was no running water. We had a pump outside. We didn't have a toilet in the sense of a toilet. It was when that got pumped out once a year and it ended out on the fields hmm. as manure. Go back to the the pioneer youth. I want to. I want to. What? What? That, how did that go? That's where it goes okay. back to. Okay. We did scout work, in a lot of ways, but we always had to say thanks to you, Soviet soldier. <laughs> um, which was kind of strange because there wasn't one around. Mm-hmm. They weren't even allowed to come out of their restricted area. The, the Russians, we had them down in the woods, but they always were behind the fence. But uh, everything was geared towards a militaristic, uniformed lifestyle. You speak alike, you act alike, and you keep an eye on your neighbor. It doesn't matter if it's your brother, your mother, your your father, whoever. To make sure they're following the orthodoxy and the ideology. You you make sure they're following the rule. If they don't, you tell us. Mm -hmm. We make sure. That's interesting because that's that's I mean obviously that's a, that's a part of what socialism is right of communism, and it's it's an attempt that I the way I see it it's it's a it's an attempt to take a natural hierarchy, which is here's what I could accomplish or here's what I might not accomplish going down based on my choices on my agency, right, and trying to flatten it by force because that's the only way you can do it because it's and, an and it's a natural exactly thing and so you force it into a linear place and the only way you do that is through tyranny at the top and tyranny at the bottom and it trickles down it really trickles down to a point where brother against brother 
sister against sister, and and still smiling in your face and living under the same roof. It's scary. The thought alone is scary. And and I have a hard time to adjust to, to uniformity because I'm an individual. And I think we each have our own rights, our own ways, our our ways to express, to accept and, and to be. And it shouldn't be somebody else trying to force you into a mold and tell you when to do what, why to do what, and how much you're entitled to. Hmm. Um, if I work hard, I should be entitled to what I earn. I shouldn't have to give it to somebody that just sits there and tells me, you didn't earn that, you give that to me. And you didn't earn that goes back to, to Obama. He tried the same thing. He started out as an, a community organizer. Well, most of, of the young pioneers go into communities as little organizers in, in certain areas. Kindergarten, how wonderful. I don't even know how to hold my spoon, but you tell me how to do it, right? Um, I, don't, I don't know how to spell my own name, but you tell me how to say thanks to your Soviet soldier. It's hard. It's so, so frustrating. When, when you see where, where it all led. You, and, and people were contending it because they were afraid. So afraid of being shot by a handful. And the funny thing is, after the wall fell, I, I met a, a soldier that was on the border. And he said, if we wouldn't have shot, they would have shot us. And it's like, what do you mean? He says, if we wouldn't have taken a shot at whoever tried to get out... Somebody Never else. Never thought of that. Yeah. Somebody else would have taken a shot at us hmm. from within, mm -hmm. not from the other side. No, I from get it. Within. Yeah. And it's like you got to be kidding me. So, so they were they were suppressed to a point. They they were in bondage. They didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Absolute bondage. Absolute submission to the rule. So, time goes by. And I know that you have had had some experience between going back and forth Several. later on. Now, is this still you're visiting your family at these times? Is that where this kind of thing starts? Yeah. yeah. You're visiting your family. My cousin, she's the same age as me. Um, she tried to apply for a visa to leave East Germany. Unhappy... Um, one of the friends made an attempt and got killed at the border. Um, I mean, I, I was 18. I mean, I was still full piss and vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> I met a friend who has family also in former East Germany. And we got together. There is or there used to be a group of people that prepared cars trunks with liners mm -hmm. and stuff and we went to berlin west berlin and you got to drive to east germany in order to get to west berlin okay west berlin was the island in the red sea the red sea was the communists around we got caught turns out the, the one that we were supposed to pick up at one of the rest stops he was stasi so we got arrested. Okay. What do you mean he was Stasi? What is that? State security. He State was, security. He so that's was, the, the, you're, you're talking about you have a Stasi file. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the file. That's where from, my file comes in. Okay. Yeah. And so so you're over there and you're trying to get. Smuggle. Well, we did smuggle. By that point, we had two of them out already. Was inside. this. Now, where did this plan come from? <sighs> we heard about it and. and the thing is, there are, at that time, there were a lot of people which had relatives of some sort, cousins, extended uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers, whatever. They got across. In East, in, in, in East Germany or that actually were allowed to leave hmm. on a visa. Usually it's the elderly that were allowed to leave on visas. So, yeah, you hear things, you know. And my mother had a very typical East German accent. I mean, she couldn't deny it if she wanted to. 
it it she stood out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. So you get information and it rolls. I mean, I don't even know where where we picked it up about the group in Berlin that prepares the cars, but we we found out about them. So you found some connections. And you decided that you were going to be a part of this. Yeah. You were going to do this. So you obviously, is this just youthful uh, adventure? No. Or, or no, is this already really. a built-in, um, you know, into your core, like, I have got to help these people? I, I think it, it was built-in because I got kicked out of the Young Christian Democratic Union at 16 mm -hmm. because I questioned the politicians a little too much. So, which is one of the democratic parties in, in Germany, mm -hmm. West Germany. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was built in. The rebellion was built in already. The, the, we have to do something. We have to force a change. We were surrounded by U.S. troops. And I hate to tell you, even, even the freedom they had look better than what we had in mm. West Germany. So, and now you go to East Germany and, and everything is, is suppressed. It's down and, and don't move, don't say. Um, you have to do something about it. And, and that was my opportunity to do something. So you're 18, 18. and you go do this. You're out of school. Are you done with, uh, yeah, what, I was, equivalent I, of high I school? I graduated. I, I actually signed up with college at that time, but mm -hmm. um, the university... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so tell me exactly what happens here as you go and you try. Is this the first attempt that you try this? That there, you have issues? No, that, that, he was the third one that we were supposed to pick up. Okay, so what about the other two? Did those go successful? Um, we, we, one of them we dropped off in West Berlin because we came from West Germany to Berlin. And on the way over, we picked them up. What you do, you go Now, my understanding is obviously, just so people don't, may not know this, West Berlin is an island. Right. Right. So it's completely surrounded by East Germany. Yeah. So even traveling down that corridor to get to West Berlin, aren't you at checkpoints with East Germans? Yes, you are. Yeah. But you go to a rest stop that is designated for West Germans or transit people. Hmm. And it's specifically designated for transit, not for East Germans or anybody else. Mm -hmm. And you back up into the parking lot because to the back is a row of um, bushes so whoever comes in can easily come in from the bushes you leave the trunk unlocked they get in mm. you go in you have your coffee you have a window of about 20 minutes and you get into your car you drive off as if nothing happens so you you're coming from you're coming somebody. in this instance you're at a rest stop and in, in in west germany no oh this is um, any we we came from west germany we were on our way to to west berlin mm. When when the third one happened, mm. yeah, so okay, and yeah, we got caught. And so what happened? Oh, what happened? The easiest thing to describe, <laughs> it was crazy. It was just guns and police everywhere. I mean, it was it was. I don't know. We we kind of felt like like we killed somebody. I mean. Okay, so you're in enemy territory. Exactly, and with and all these guns and us too. yeah, it was it was. I don't even know. We must so have what's been. going through your mind? How did you get caught? <sighs> he was Stasi. So you've or got you've in, got somebody informant. in the trunk at this time. Yeah. Who who is this? I don't even know. Okay, really. so this is all kind of set up for um, you. You're, it, you're just. It was previously set up. Okay. To to the group in Berlin. I wanted to get my cousin out. That was my main thing. And, and we tried, but until then you get, hey, there is somebody. So we did take two people out mm -hmm. and, and everything was fine. I mean, nothing went wrong. And then the third one, everything went upside down. So and were you at a checkpoint? No, um, we were actually at the transit rest stop. Okay which is the specifically designated rest area for people transiting from West Berlin to West Germany or West Germany to West Berlin. Mm -hmm. But you're in East Germany. It's in yes. East Germany. So, and, and I mean, it was just, I don't even know where these 
policemen came from they all of a sudden they were all around us and and it's like freezing up and in it was just nuts it was nuts well it sounds pretty scary it is because um they stand there with with the machine guns drawn and i don't know if they were secured if they were loaded i mean you you have no clue mm -hmm. you get treated like like you're the biggest enemy in the world i mean it's like wait a minute i haven't even done anything yet you know i haven't even made a move yet mm -hmm. and and you don't even breathe i mean it's it's so so hard to breathe because you're afraid that if you take a deep breath they're going to shoot you because they they're going to get the wrong idea mm -hmm. what you're planning on doing and it, it's it was mad before you know it we were in these um Hansi went off with with, with, with with a group of men and, and I was separated and I got into one of the vans and the vans have little booths in it without a window mm -hmm. so you, you just get locked in and it's rather very small so if you're heavy like me now I wouldn't be able to be in there today so did they how many, how many people were you with I had one person with me you had one person with you and then whoever you were picking up in the trunk yeah. were all three of you back in the back of this van then no um hadn't she got into to one van i was taking off to the other and i don't know what happened to the person in in the car at the court date in the trunk was, yeah mm -hmm. um at the court date he showed up as a witness for the state when when it turned out he was stasi um i assume he didn't go anywhere from there on. He went home mm -hmm. to to fool the next one. Yeah. So. Okay. So they had they had set you guys up. Oh yeah, I was a definite setup. Mm -hmm. So what happened? How long was the court date after you were caught? Um, being in jail, the the first thing was almost three months of it was investigation almost daily. So you were in jail in East Germany for yeah. three months. Separated from from others. At from first, I had others? no, no, I had no, no other person around me. I were you in a, my, were you in a cell by yourself? All by myself. Wow. And, and uh, you're 18 years old. Yeah. The the interviews, the the investigations were were rather strange. It was the, kind of like law and order, good guy, bad guy. Mm -hmm. They tried that, tried to convince me that. Oh yeah, when when the wall falls, we're gonna be all together, and and it's gonna be like nothing happened. So what happened? And it's like, excuse me, hmm. what happened? Nothing happened. You know, it's like, yeah, your family and blah blah blah. Um, it was crazy. It was it was just absolute mad. And then a week before the court date, I finally get to be with with others in a cell, and it was eight women girls two of them were there because they they applied for visas to leave east germany <laughs> so they were there for the control of it mm -hmm. one of them was there she tried to escape to hungary and got caught so, i know that's a route that a lot of people took later on yeah my cousin did too yeah and, and in hungary and then come around austria. the backside yeah austria and, into yeah. austria and my cousin did and and it was a successful one mm -hmm. my brother took him out in the trunk to to austria i think there used to be an electric fence there that had gone down or something austrians were rather very relaxed but um so come, at the court what happened at the court my grandmother and uncle showed up and they were asked if they know me my grandmother said that's my granddaughter my uncle says that's my niece do you know why she's here my grandmother said i don't even know why i'm here what is going on my uncle just nodded the head and next thing i know i was told i'm getting five years it's like what so five years and, and i got walked out i mean it wasn't even 10 minutes I mean, it was a whole. So they had the they had the the guy in the trunk came out as a witness against yeah, you. Is that pretty much did, it? He he just stood there. They asked him if if I'm the one. He said yes. Mm -hmm. Um, he he told us that. Um, oh, he he told the courts. 
which was just one judge and, and a secretary. That he got in the trunk, he got all the information through us, which is not true. But I wasn't allowed to say anything. Hmm. So, I mean, everything was preset already. And like I said, my grandmother was asked if she knows me, and she says, yes, that's my granddaughter, but I don't know what's going on. Uh, my uncle was asked if he knows who I am. And and that pretty much was it, and they got walked out, and then... And, and, so it's just a formality. They're just going through a formality to write, much, put some checklists. Pretty some, much. My lawyer wasn't even there. Your lawyer wasn't even there. My, my lawyer wasn't even there. And they told you you're going to have five years. Five years. But that so, didn't happen, did it? No, I did a year and one day. So you did another year in jail. A year and one day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, which was um, no fun. Yeah. Because you have... <sighs> The Yellow Misery in Bozen, it's close to the Czech-Polish border area. It's in that corner, Bozen. Uh-huh. was built by Hitler, actually. Huh. And at that time, it, it was called the Yellow Misery because the facade outside was kind of yellowish with a gray hint, like most of it in East Germany. Mm-hmm. The walls were thick. The, the cells were... were very small. You had two bunk beds, a small table. You weren't allowed to sit. You had to stand. The only time you were allowed to sit was for your food, which meant breakfast and dinner. So two meals a day. Yeah. And you, you bunked with another woman? Eventually, yeah. Eventually. Mm-hmm. She also got caught smuggling people. So. so she was from West Germany. She was West Germany with a American husband. How many, how many people, what pers- were there a lot of West Germans in that prison? It was solely West Germans. It was only West Germans only in that, West in that Germans, prison. Yeah, we had no contact. Other than the prison guards, there were no other East Germans. Hmm. So it was all West Germans, except for when she was East German born. Her family hmm. left early on, went to Austria. She had dual citizenship, Austrian German citizenship. And I'm not quite sure what her background really was, but it was somewhat politically motivated. She had a 10-year stay with the East German government. So, so what are your parents thinking at this time? I mean, um, they, what, 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 I, what I had you know. told them about leaving to go to East Berlin? Were you just telling um, them you are visiting your well, family? or No, I actually it was a weekend, and I told my mother she's going to babysit my son who was six months old at that time. Oh, you had a son at the time. Yeah, six okay. months. Well, the, the, oh, that is tragic. Oh, that's the just... East German government, after three months, informed the West German government. And the police finally went over to my mother and told them that he got me. Mm-hmm. So, But it took him three months. Of course, she has no idea at all where you are. Mm-mm. Or what's happened? Well, I didn't. I didn't think we would get caught. I mean, sure. twice, twice prior to it, everything went fine. Mm-hmm. I, n- I never would have thought of the consequences like that. Were there any attempts from West Germany to try and get you guys out? Or? They did. That's that's what East Germany did. The legalization of of smuggling. They gave you a longer sentence, and for every day that you were released earlier, they get. A certain amount of money. Ah. So, from West sentence, Germany. From West Germany. So, so my sentence with five years. I did one year, one day because I got caught in a leap year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, they got four years paid for from okay. from West Germany. So it's like, what? Huh. That's legalized. Mm-hmm. So they but know I, you're only going to be there for a certain amount of time. Oh, they do. They do. But there, it's, it's extortion. Awful. It is. It is. I mean, Vogel, which was a lawyer in East Germany, which worked for the East German government, took large fees to help East Germans to mm-hmm. apply for the visas to get out. Then half of the people ended up in prison, even work camps. And, and you do work in East German prisons. You do not have a choice. You do not work. You only get one meal a day. You're in the cell by yourself. You don't see anybody else. In order to to keep your sanity, you volunteer to work. Mm-hmm. And you do have 12-hour work days. Mm. So it's not 
that you sit around and not do anything. Mm-hmm. You you're you're doing your your parts, and and you have neighbors. You can actually talk to somebody while mm-hmm. you do your your work. Eventually, it becomes routine, so you get to talk and blah blah blah, and turn your head. And when you get caught, well, they're gonna cut your rations. <laughs> so. so you had when you get caught talking. Yeah. Okay. So it's probably worth it, though. Oh, it was. <laughs> yeah. Every time. <laughs> yeah. You thought you were going to be in there for five years. So was it sudden that they came to you and let you go what happens after a is year? They, they show up. Um, you get separated from everybody, and you get into a cell by yourself, a floor above, right under the roof. And all you have is a cow factor, which comes by and brings you civilian clothes. What you get is a an old Russian military uniform or East German military uniform, which been taken out of commission. Mm-hmm. They're bright blue with even brighter yellow stripes on, on the jackets, the skirts, or the pants have a bright yellow stripe on the outside. Um, the shirts are white. The shoes are, are, I don't even know, I would call them clungos. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they don't fit. What did you eat every day? Oh, gosh. We ate... Actually, um, in prison, it wasn't so bad. It was jail that was horrible. Mm -hmm. Um, The three months in jail. You get everything in a plastic bowl, and you get to avoid swallowing anything. You get a spoon that is the size of a serving spoon Mm. because people swallow items to end up in Mm. hospitals Mm. to get better treatment, Mm -hmm. which I found out later. Mm. But, um, yeah, everything goes into, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's just like a pig's trough. It's just all put together. Mm-hmm. And, and the whole excuse is it goes into one stomach anyways. Mm-hmm. So you either leave it or starve. So you've been in for a year. They let you go, finally. Oh, it wasn't so easy. Um, they, they separated me from everybody. I didn't even know what the heck I did. Wasn't even said anything about about you going home, nothing. Okay. So the following day, I end up in the truck. They actually trucked me over to the border. At the border, I got a piece of paper. And right before the train left, they put me on the train and told me, see ya. You better not come back into East Germany. You're not getting visas. Don't even apply. It's like, whoops. And that was it. It's like, and then in Hof, the police already waited for me. Hmm. And they traveled with me on the train all the way to Stuttgart to take interview. They didn't take me off. They traveled with me. Okay, so when when about is this? What year about is this? 78 to 79. 78 to 79. No. So yeah. they're still in their glory, so to speak, in East Germany oh, at were. this time. Yeah, They haven't had a decline yet or... It's common, but it hasn't happened really yet. It happened. Rebellion happened often on um, Dresden, Leipzig, and Berlin. Berlin was easy to suppress because it was the seat of the government. Mm -hmm. So you had way much more um, police force there. However, um, Leipzig and Dresden, which are further away, even today are... um, strong areas for for neo-nazis today but also nationalism and they the the youth my age group was the one that started together and and started to to revolt against the system in east germany it, it got suppressed rather fast with with force would you say that maybe some of those pockets then then in east germany where there might be movements of neo-Nazism, kind of has its roots in rebellion against yes. the communists. Yes, yeah. definitely. And and it held strong, too. Mm-hmm. However, what, what's so sad is um, they turned it into nationalism. Mm-hmm. And nationalism is just another form of socialism. Yeah, I mean it's just they're going to the other end of the spectrum and it yeah. ends up the same way. But but uh it was it was the beginnings of it. Mm-hmm. And I mean the the whole um rebellion against the system 
really started out of Leipzig and Dresden and 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 eventually grew. I mean, they couldn't they couldn't suppress. It. It's like throwing a, a stone into a lake. The the little waves keep mm-hmm. going and spreading, spreading, spreading. Eventually. Have you ever seen the TV series Deutschland, 83? No. You should watch it. <laughs> that would be fascinating for you, I think. It's, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a show on, it's in German, and I'm pretty sure it's German produced. And it's, uh, it's Deutschland, 83, so it's in 1983. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long you were in Germany. 83, I was, where the heck was I? In? Yeah, no, I was in... in, in Ellingen, so I was on the university still. Okay, so so there's it, it, one year in '83, where they're still kind of in their glory and their their uh, um, their ideology reigns supreme. But then it has Deutschland '86, so the next season is in takes place in '86, and things aren't the same. Oh, so they're 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 already. scrapping for money anywhere they can get it. Yeah, they're trying to go to Africa gone. and. Places where well, they Well, that's, that's the one thing East Germans did. Um, anything that was foreign, Cubans, Africans from mm-hmm. from certain countries in Africa. Angola. That, and... Yeah, places like that. They had preferential treatment. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter if it was in the stores. In East Germany. In East Germany. Yeah. They had prefer and, and East Germans looked at them with, with a lot of hate. They, mm-hmm. they had a lot of names for them. Mm-hmm just not human mm-hmm. because of that and and a lot of especially africans um and i'm not trying to defend it but they got treatments that weren't too nice mm-hmm. the nazis come to mind when, when i think of it because um at my grandmother's village which is a rather small village if you have 500 head living in the village you have a lot and that does not include the cattle. Mm-hmm. Um, they had two Africans living there. They worked in in the closer city, Waldenburg. One of them wa- uh, walked at night, and he got the, the most horrible beating. The most horrible beating. I think that was absolutely unnecessary, but that's the hatred that that, mm-hmm. that came to the top. Because they had preferential treatment, these guys didn't. Why did they? Know. Why did they do that? Why did they give them preferential treatment? I, I, that's actually in this series. I saw that. Um, why did they get preferential? I don't even know. Because mm-hmm. it's it's. Maybe they want the connections back in their country. Probably. They, they probably. need they need some connections yeah, out there. Probably and, um, because these were were privileged guys to begin with to come there, mm-hmm. but East Germany paid for their stay, paid for their travel. I mean. They really were privileged, even though they could have come out of a poor little village. Well, especially when you're comparing it with the people in East Germany that have nothing. Exactly. You know, that, that have no freedoms and exactly. But but the no hatred abundance at all. That per- he probably didn't even know what the heck was going on. Mm-hmm. But I think the beating that that one guy received, in my opinion, was overdoing it. Mm-hmm. They let their frustration out on somebody that was most likely the innocent one. Mm-hmm. So and, it, and like it I said, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to defend socialism or anything, but the mistreatment of that individual was, was uncalled for. Yeah. yeah. So, well, what happened when you went home? I mean, you went, you, everything became normal at that point, and you went no, to, you no, went to no, university? No, no, and... There is an adjustment period. Okay. Um, and then I got married and came to the U.S. the first time. Holy mm-hmm. smokes. <laughs> to learn of, of the freedom... Here. Mm-hmm. So even in West Germany, you still want you're, it. You're still, you're still too controlled. Even mm-hmm. in, I mean, you even today, move, even today, you do not move without signing in and out of your local police department. From your town. From your, your town. Even if you move from from the third floor to the first floor, you go to your po- local police department, and you let them know that you moved from the third to the first floor. You have a six week window to do so. Even today in West Germany, so it there there's a lot of control, a lots of policing. Mm-hmm. So you're 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 back and and you're in West Germany. Obviously, a much better condition there, but you still feel 
that there's more freedom available out there somewhere. There is, and that's why I signed up with ASTA, um, which is an exchange program on the university, and I went to Italy. And that was the first realization that there is more to life than, than just what's offered, mm -hmm. actually. You bartered, even in the store, you bartered. What? You don't have to pay what's on the ticket? No, you bartered. And if you don't, they, they look at you like... Yeah, they're suspicious. You, Same in Latin America. What, 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 what's your problem here, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, you bought or... And, and boy, you learned the language rather fast. <laughs> um, so I hitchhike home. I meet my, my now ex-husband, who was stationed in, in Venice or near Venice in Vicenza, the city of gold. Mm. And he showed me a, a, a world that was even available to me, that was like, oh, wait a minute, what? You can do what? And you don't have to? And you can go from one state to the other, moving about without having to, to tell anybody that you're moving? It's like, uh, okay, I'll check it out, sure. Hmm. And boy, did I like it. That's why mm -hmm. I became a U.S. citizen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate my freedom. I love my freedom. But I'm afraid of the direction that we're taking right now. Well, that's where I wanted to go next. What, you know, there's so much, what has changed, it seems to me, in the last 10 to 15 years is there's, there's a movement of, and I think social media has something to do with it. I'll use the term privilege has something to do with it in the sense that we don't have hardships. And so... And I say hardships. We don't have hardships compared to a lot of other countries. That's true. You know, no wars that most of us are going to. We're, we're a very wealthy country. And so it's easy to start thinking of other ideas, other systems that, hey, what about this over here? And in the last 10 to 15 years, we have this rise of political correctness, for example. The... You say the last 10 to 15 years, I disagree with you. Okay. Um, the roots are way much evil. The roots were set in the 50s. Those roots, I know what you're talking about. I guess what I'm talking about is is the, it's just is the controlling coming, of language. Yeah, but it's, the controlling it's, of language. it's just now coming to the surface. Mm -hmm. We lost control over the educational system. That's where it started. It came into the back doors to, to the school systems. The infiltration, the brain manipulation of the youth, which was also attempted in my case. However, in my case, it was easy to ignore because I had a French father and a, and a Russian mother that grew up in East Germany. I mean, sorry, but somehow um, your suppression doesn't quite sit well with mm -hmm. me. It, it really showed up in, in the schools, and, and it wasn't just schools, it was the universities as well. And they really did get infiltrated, and, and it, it's coming to the surface now. Okay, infiltrated with what? The, the thought of socialism, communism, um, this, this... Especially in the humanities departments. Yeah. And it's fine. I mean, I don't mind to help my neighbor because that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be the first one to help. But not to the extent you stand there and you tell me I have to help and you pocket the money. doesn't fly. Mm -hmm. I share. I share to my abilities, to the best of my abilities. But do not force me to share. Do not tell me it's my responsibility when it's not. Do not ask me to support you when you have means to support yourself. There, there is something wrong with the picture here. We cannot solely rely on a government structure that tells us when to do, what to do, how to do, where to do. When we have freedom of our own agency. If I'm to a point where I need help, I will ask for help. But don't tell me I have to help because I have two pennies more than the other. I work for those two pennies more. I'm fixing my roof with those two pennies. I'm not willing to pay somebody else's roof when I have to take care of mine first. So I'm not saying no, 
but I am saying no to socialism. I'm saying no to communism. Communism and socialism, the way it's written, is la la land. It's magic. It's utopia. It's a exactly. utopian ideology that says exactly. this is it's going la to be fed. And that's again what I'm saying about privilege and about uh, uh, the abundance that we have here. You start. You can have a number of people start to think, "Oh, well, this is." They forget, is what I'm saying. You forget. They do. You know, they we do. we grew up. I grew up in the Cold War period. So did I. You know, when when I had we uh, still had sirens going. Yeah, exactly. Off and we had so did I. we had drills on how to protect the in world school. Where the cello is. Yeah, sure. I remember getting underneath the desk. Well, it we, was we a, it was a bomb a test, cello. you know, and uh, it's. You know, you're reminded a lot more. You know, there was a constant threat of another superpower that wanted to change right. your world, right? And and it is, um, and and it's taking place again. And and it's so open now, in our face, with you have to share, you have to do this, you have to do that, and and then oh. The other thing is climate change, because in 12 years, we're all going to be gone. It's too hot to live here. Well, wait a minute. I heard that in the 60s already. Mm. Oh, it's 2019. We're still here. Man, that's a long 12 years. It's this forcing, this, this, this trying to uniform everything. It didn't work on the Mao. It didn't work on the Brezhnev. It doesn't work on anybody. Yeah, and I think, I think, I think that that's the point again. I think that, I think that the issue is... There's this idea, everybody would like to help everybody else. I mean, most everybody, right? I mean, that's a common thing. And that's what oh, that ideology nature. plays on. It's it plays on that. Help. It says, well, don't you want to be a helpful person? Don't you want, don't you think the poor should be taken care of? And the problem is, is that when you circumvent the individual, then, then you take everything away. You can't have a civilization survive no, when when you circumvent the individual That's what it is. and you go directly to a collective and everybody has to be part of the collective and the orthodoxy and then you remove individualism right and so now what we've lost is our our free will our free agency is gone or or it's barely surviving on a daily basis in, yeah, in east and, germany and, for and, example and you better not make it obvious um so is political correctness worse in germany than it is oh, here heck today yeah because I know in, Heck, in England, yeah. it's not. In England, oh. it's not. So we've been to England. We watch a lot of BBC shows. There's no. There's very little political oh, correctness there. The F there. word trumps in, in every other sentence I know. Yeah, but, 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 but there's um, no. They're, they're not worried about offending not, a different race, a different not, people. They're not. But in, in, in West Germany or in Germany now, it's extreme. Hmm. It's extreme. And Worse you're not than here. Allowed, Oh, yeah. You're not allowed to call them foreigners anymore. Not allowed to call them asylum seekers. Or what? You actually get punished. You can be fined. You can be for, fined. For hate speech. For hate speech, yeah. Or if you say it on social media, they actually lock, block you for a whole month. That's actually starting to happen in England as well. So, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's speech control. And that's where it usually starts. That's where it starts. That's right. And you that was cannot, my point about language. You cannot language. say this. You cannot. You have to accept. No, you don't have to accept. You have to say what's bothering you. Otherwise, they won't know what's bothering you and they continue doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is. They'll continue doing it because you're not allowed to say it. So you see the political correctness that's going on right now. This control of language has something very similar to what you saw in East Germany. Yeah. And, and we're starting here now. Oh, they're not foreigners? What the heck are they? I'm a foreigner, even though I'm a U.S. citizen. I can proudly say, though, I'm a U.S. citizen of foreign origins, okay? So what? Most of us are. But I don't have to take it what's going to come now if we continue going down that road. You can't do this. You can't do that. I'm packing my bags. I already got half of it in there. So I can count sheep. Why, New, why New Zealand? Oh, because they got more sheep than anybody else. <laughs> it's a beautiful place, I hear. Oh, it is. It is. Actually, I loved it. I wouldn't mind to go back. Okay, so you've been there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that we haven't discussed that you really would want to say? What I want to say, please do not vote Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Um, I'm a registered Republican. I'm rather independent, though. 
Because I'm not a party person, honestly. I, yeah, I don't I, like I, either I, of the parties. I'm, I don't. It's just I do not care for the past they're taking right now. Mm -hmm. I really don't care. And it's scary. To me, it's scary. Well, on that line, I, I mean, I will say, I mean, it, there is now a concern, obviously. You've got ma a major presidential candidate who comes out and says he's a, democratic, a socialist Democrat, basically. Right. Or, he made already over a million just in book in a book that, that doesn't even make sense if you really read it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I read a, um, a little excerpt of it, and I, I'm like, wait a minute, what? because he contradicted himself in it. What you're saying is not what you're doing. Mm -hmm. No, he's a little more equal than everybody else, again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a little more equal than everybody else. So, and I see this in the kids, too. I mean, if you go to any university, even in a red area, right, a place that you would think would be very Republican, and you're going to get the kids that are, you know, of course, they haven't lived in reality yet, but there, there's a lot of, a lot, they, I've seen a lot of surveys of what seems to be a more right-leaning university. And when, when Bernie Sanders ran, ran last time, he's usually the number one free, choice, free, free. choice for all college That's students. That's the magic word, free. Well, I really appreciate you coming in and talking. This is very compelling. It's very, Thanks. very interesting. It really is. It's, it's, I, it's, it's a fascinating time in history that when you, you have gone, when you've actually personally had a experience with what happens with totalitarianism and, and the differences from what you have now and, and I'm not what you saw there. And, I'm not willing to give it up. Yeah. It, it's, it's, earned the hard way it's being kept the hard way and i'm hoping we're able to keep it what do you think of east germany's anthem it was risen from the ruins Alfer staden aus ruinen aus den ruinen ruinen um rebuild out of the ruins the thing about it they're is, talking about world war ii right? exactly mm -hmm. um the ruins are the Trümmerfrauen working the bunch of clearing of the bricks so it, it can be rebuilt. The ruins are damages that were done 80% by Russians, 20% by Americans and others, okay? But 80% by Russians, but it's thanks to you, Soviet soldier. Very interesting. And that's that. their motto. We're coming out of the ruins, which the Russians... Dresden, Dresden was bombed by the Russians before the Americans even thought about it. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Isn't it? That's brainwashing right there. Isn't it? Thanks again, Sylvia. Really appreciate your You're time. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, that was wonderful. To me, it's just scary the route that we're taking now. Um, this this forcing of of thinking otherwise.